Brethren, praise the Lord. We appreciate God who is our Father, the Provider, the Keeper, the Upholder. This is the year 2023 and this comes as the first episode in this year. But of course, the same menu of encouragement, the same menu of looking towards God. And we continue finding God for our sustenance, for our provisions, for our good. And so we continue thanking him for what he has been and for what he will continue being because he is ever the same yesterday, today, and forever. The God that did provide for us last year, 2022, is the same God that will provide for us this year, 2023. And so we appreciate him in all circumstances, be it good, be it bad, be it high, be it low, he remains God. And so we continue on with our episodes, finding God, and that is why we are created to be, to continue in search for him, to know him more and more. Because when we fear him, the Bible says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And we know that when you are wise, you are able to deal with life situations, to go through, to maneuver through, and life continues. And so the biblical um, writings that we consider now, we are continuing with looking at the men and women in the Bible that served God. And because they served God faithfully, God rewarded them. And the reason why we shall continue in this service, because he promises his rewards to those that remain faithful to him. And now the person that we are going to look at is the man called Prophet Elijah. Elijah, like anyone, was a man from nowhere, and God called him. Actually, he just appears on the scene, the prophet Elijah. What is only known about him is that the man from Tishbe. And this we get from the book of 1 Kings, chapter 17, verse 1. And the Bible talks about Elijah and says, Now Elijah, the Tishbite, from the from Gilead settlers said to Ahab, As the Lord God of Israel lives, I stand before him, and there will be no dew or rain during these years except by my word. Now, here is how Elijah appears. And I just got interested in the way he comes on the scene. On the stage, he appears to prophesy to a king, a king called King Ahab. And the Bible says that he comes from Tishbe and the land is Gilead, the settlers there. And he appears with a word strictly that I stand before God. And of course, he had found him. He was in close touch with the Father, who is our Lord God. And he says there will be no dew or rain until at my word. Now, in this situation, we who live in our generation ask ourselves, how come that this came this way? You know, the people of Israel were God's people. We are God's people as well. And God had chosen them and they left. He enabled them to leave Egypt and they were going to the promised land. And he had given them commandments. He had given them regulations. The regulations were, Worship no another God but me. And that was commandment number one. Now here, the people of Israel had deviated. Instead of finding God, they were finding other gods. Of course, there was a temptation which was so huge that they started looking at how the Canaanites were living their life and they were worshipping other gods. And the particular one that we want to mention here that, are, that is related to this passage is that they started worshipping a god called Baal. And Baal was a god of fertility. The one that was responsible for the rain, the one that was responsible for the productivity of crops, the productivity of animals, the productivity of human beings, the productivity of the soil. And so Baal became a huge temptation for the people of Israel. Now when Prophet Elijah comes onto the scene, he begins with that, that you people of God, instead of finding God in this situation, in this environment, among the Canaanites, you are 
eventually coped the way the Israelites, the Israelites, the Canaanites live. And so this is the point that situation is coming in our life. And sometimes we find ourselves overtaken by what other people are doing and we forget the one that called us. And so in this episode, we look at this man and he comes on the scene and he begins with exactly what was happening and tells King Ahab that there will be no rain. To prove to the Israelites, to prove to the Canaanites who the true God was. And this is the point. And indeed, it started the journey and there was no rain for three and a half years. Proving that the only God Almighty above all is our Father God in heaven. And so Elijah brings us to this. The reason why his name in Hebrew is pronounced Eliyahu. Eliyahu means Yahweh is my God. My God is Yahweh. And so to you, my brother, my sister, even during our times like this, we come with a message in finding God. We, find a, we come with a message in this year, 2023. We come with a message in this season. Like Elijah knew whom he worshipped, we invite you to know whom you worship. Even when the situations will seem difficult, even when the situations will seem confusing. You know, for the Israelites, it was confusing. Because whom should we worship? Should we worship Baal, the God of productivity or fertility? Or should we worship God of heaven? And remember for them, they had representations of their gods. They had sculpts, they had the images, they had the poles, they had the stones. They had, and so that they would put it in and show that this is God. But our God is an invisible, invisible God. And so this is the point, my brothers and my sisters, that situations can be confusing. Situations can be devastating. But Elijah remained faithful to God. And so he prophesied during that time. And we read about him two chapters, three chapters, I mean. That would mean this is 1 Kings chapter 17, chapter 18, chapter 19. And we shall flow over into 2 Kings chapters 1 and 2. But the point is that God was a God that appeared to this prophet. And so I pray that one, that may God appear to you during this situation, that he will speak specially to you. And that Elijah appeared to proclaim to the king, to the situation that was, and he proclaimed there would be no, there would no, no, there would be drought, there would be no rain for a number of years. It happened so. So I pray that God gives us the word of discernment to talk about, to talk against the ills in our society. Elijah was an upholder of the moral law of God. Now, why I chose to speak about this is, will you remain an upholder of the moral law of God? And the moral law of God at that time, he emphasized the monotheism, the worship of unknown God. During our time, we have so many things that are confusing us, that are derailing us, that are moving us away. But the point is, Shall we be upholders of God's moral law in a situation that is? This is a huge lesson that I bring to you and that I've given to myself to remain upholders of the moral law of God. Two, to remain faithful in the time of adversity. This man, Elijah, as you'll read those chapters 17, 18, 19, he remained faithful even in the time of adversity. And he had several encounters with the situations and the prophets of Baal were all over. And the Bible does mention that there were 450, meaning that he was just alone. And he complained to God, he said, God, it's only me remaining. But look, Baal worshipped 450 prophets all over the place. But listen to me, that God what we see here is that God will never leave his chosen people. That God will never leave. He never left Elijah. God protected him. God provided for him. And we shall continue with this to see how God did provide for the man, Elijah. And so there were contests. There were, you know, fights and here and there, arguments. And Elijah stood his ground. And so I pray for you. 
that as you worship God, you will stand your ground because you worship a true and faithful God who is our Father in heaven. That even when in chapter 18, verse 21, I mean following, you find the man actually contesting and arguing and, you know, a contest at Mount Carmel with the 450 prophets of Baal. But he does mention something that actually, if Yahweh is God, follow him. In verse 21, 1 Kings 18, 21. If Yahweh is God, follow him. But if Baal is, then follow him. Now, during our time, we also ask ourselves that in the confusion of things, we who are faithful, trying to find God, looking for him everywhere, continue upholding him, and he is God. We urge ourselves that if God is God, we continue uh, following him. So Elijah's most and deepest prophetic experience in all these things was highlighted during his pilgrimage to the mountain of God. And the mountain was called Mount Horeb. And this we read in chapter 19, that when he was there, he discovered, he made a discovery. The discovery that I want to give, that I want to ask you to make a discovery as well. And he discovered that God is not in the storm. God cannot appear in earthquake. God cannot, cannot appear in the lightning. Of course, I can only he was on the mountain. Read there and you'll find these things that I'm talking about in 1 Kings chapter 19. But what he discovered is that God is invisible and spiritual. Only best known during Revelation. Now, our God, we say, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. And he is spirit, the Bible says, that those who worship him must worship him in the truth and in the spirit. And this is evidenced because okay, it's the Lord Jesus Christ who says these things in the New Testament when he was having encounters with several people also. He told them God is spirit and those who worship him must worship him in truth and spirit. Now here Elijah leaves us a lesson that I'm going to wind up with. That he is invisible. God, you cannot use physical eyes to see. The Canaanites desired to see their gods. That's why they made wood, stones, and whatever, even human beings. And they were worshipping them in their own way. For you and me, who try to find God... Pick a lesson that our God is invisible and our God is spiritual. And the point is revelation. He comes to us. He reveals himself in a special way. And Elijah discovered that he is a still small voice. Quietness, but he exhibits power. He exhibits strength. He exhibits wonderment. And this is the point that I'm making. In 1 Kings 19, 11 to 12, this is what... Um, Elijah discovered. So I wind up with this. There are very, 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 very few things that as we talk about the man Elijah, one, his name means Yahweh is my God. Now, I therefore ask you that take him as your God, invisible though, but he remains powerful, he remains working. And I pray that he will work. Even in Genesis chapter 1, you read, that the Spirit of God was hovering over. It was not a physical thing, but it was a spiritual issue. And his spirit hovered and he recreated. He put things in order. And I pray for you that he is spirit, that he will put you in order. His name is Yahweh. Yahweh is my God. And so, point number two is that being a strong man or woman of God does not mean that you will never face discouragement. Elijah first discouragement many times and even God himself told him in certain situations move away from this situation in first Kings chapter 17 verse 2 he tells him move on go and he tells him to go the point that we're going to deal with next when we meet again in the next episode and God did his provisions there and so however strong however powerful there are moments of discouragement and I want to ask you, my brother, that even when discouragements come, remain faithful. Even when hard times come, remain faithful. Even when, whatever it is, remain a focused person. Elijah, Eliyahu, the prophet, remained faithful 
and discouragement may come. So it means that God, looking to God, first, when we are, when we are faced with adversity, is the point. Looking up to him is the point. And so during challenges, we have many. We are in the sea of whatever they are. But the point is, remain focused. Now, point number three is that even when you are left alone, search God. Look for God. Elijah complained that he said, I'm alone. But even if you seem to be one alone, search God, find him. And this situation, our times are so tumultuous. Our times are so confusing. But remain focused, remain faithful. God is God. Now, lastly, in here, on this one, that confront evil, confront sin as Elijah did. And we need people that will be open to evil. People will be open to sin and say, this is sin, this is bad, this is good. And so that we shall avoid um, many, many impositors that come around like the prophets of Baal were impositing themselves. And so we ask God, who is our father that will keep you and will keep me? Elijah leaves us a message, a message of even when you are alone, you remain focused, you remain trusting and believing God. And even in the face of discouragement, never give up. And we have said this over and over because actually it's the message. And so we shall continue encouraging ourselves even there 2023 and we shall move on. So Elijah leaves us a message of um, remaining focused that if God is God, we worship him and let us continue. So, so in our episodes, finding God, we desire that we shall remain focused on him even in adversity, even in discouragement, even in the business. When you are so busy, your mind remain focused. And may God who started it continue on. Continue it in your life and that you will remain focused like Elijah did. He was a man focused and remained faithful even in adversity. May God keep you. May God provide for you. In the name of God the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And we say, Amen. <music>